I like your 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 mug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I just have I just have a boring glass. Here. Halloween themed, you know, got the yeah, yeah, man, me. that's nice. Yeah, uh, let's ask just a, a kind of a silly question here. I don't want to get like too deep. There's a lot that's of fine, there's some deep ones on here. All right, start with the easy ones. <laughs> yeah, easy ones first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about this? Uh, what's for dinner tonight? Do you make what's for dinner, for dinner tonight yeah. that's actually a really hard question because <laughs> <laughs> we're actually thinking of going to the movies tonight to catch the new halloween movie oh okay. uh, so right. yeah we're super into halloween in this household so yeah, uh, yeah. Fa favorite season of course i think it'll be steak for me yeah and, uh, yeah. and um, probably steak for her too um do you like your steak like dinner? well done or rare that's such a boring answer but medium rare, medium, medium rare, rare yeah, is, yeah. is yeah yeah I that's mean, for yeah. me <laughs> that that's nice because it's nice and juicy you know yeah. and uh, exactly exactly on the outside exactly and, yeah it's hard man especially when you're not when english is in your first language oh I, you're doing great <laughs> i think you're, you, Thanks, you speak man. better english than i do you know because I, <laughs> I use a lot of filler that, that, words that's kind of, <laughs> yeah 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 that's kind of yeah <laughs> Today, on another exciting episode of Short Film Sensei, we speak with Youssef Bilal and talk about his film, Thaw, which is on YouTube, available for streaming. In this episode, we talk about pre-production, how important it is, test shoots, how important those are, and editing to music before doing anything else. Let's get on the mat. Uh, how's the prices over there for movies now? Is Man, it pretty steep? Because it's, it's 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 really expensive. Yeah. Sweden is probably the most expensive country to live in really? nowadays. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. I think for price of a ticket, it's probably around twenty three, twenty four dollars. Yeah, per ticket. Yeah, I just went and saw uh, Lyle Lyle Crocodile. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. My kid yeah, wanted yeah. to see it, so yeah, yeah. Um, and that cost, I think, the whole trip. We didn't even buy candy. We had candy. We brought candy in. You know, we snuck it in. Um, yeah, yeah. We still paid almost, I think, 70 bucks for the three wow. of us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. That's a lot. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge, huge cinema guy i like to watch my movies in the cinema yeah uh, so it's a lot of it's probably at least once or twice a week for me mm -hmm. it's my safe zone yeah. i love it yeah and, uh, when i was a kid it was it was a, around four or five dollars yeah for a ticket um, yeah. in here so yeah. good times uh so speaking of which i don't know you, I, I yeah have you ever Sorry. screened you, you have you screened your films in theaters before i've i've uh, in festivals i have mm -hmm. and then when i went to school mm -hmm. i went to a media school so it was a, it was a film school in high school so i usually we usually showed our movies in the big screen okay uh, nice but never in any other circumstances always been in school and in festivals okay um, but i've never done a long movie i mean my longest movie i've done is 20 minutes uh, that's the longest oh, really? one I've done. Okay. Yeah, I've done a 90 minutes feature, but that was when I was about 15, 16. Yeah. So I don't even count that in my resume. I mean, uh, the ambition is to direct feature films. That's always been the goal. But in order for us, especially in Sweden, if you want to sell your uh, a, a feature film idea, mm -hmm. uh, you need to show them lots of short films that you've done. Uh, in order for them to trust you as a filmmaker. So we're in that kind of state right now. We're trying to uh, make as many short films as we can. Yeah, like building a portfolio up and then um, right. they just have something to reference when they, when you do your pitch, I guess. Exactly, exactly. And also, you know, I, I usually fund my own movies, so... Yeah. I can't. I can't make uh, feature-length films, man. Yeah. It has to be short, <laughs> yeah. short movies. Yeah, I feel yeah. you there. I feel you there. Yeah, yeah it's, man. It's tough whenever yeah, yeah. you're so, the only source of income for the, ex the film exactly. Income. So, so yeah. if you wanted to maintain that sense of quality that I strive for, mm -hmm. 
it's impossible to do to do any movie longer than 10 minutes uh, yeah. for us. And so you, you and your crew, um, are, you guys have been working together since high school or uh, most of you guys? Or? Actually, w- yeah, we, we've we've done movies since we were kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think our first movies movie we did was when we were around 10. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, so but it was amateur movies. You know, yeah. we were kids. We were yeah. just taking my dad's old old uh, high eight camera and just shoot stuff, you know. Yeah. Nonsense movies. But 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 later on, they kind of fell out of interest. So I uh, I still love doing that. So I went my own way and made my own movies and fell into making music videos, uh, done a lot of music videos. And then the last couple of years, we we kind of reconnected. Uh, we stayed as friends during this whole time, but we've never made movies together since we were kids. Mm-hmm. And now a couple of now for a couple of years, we we just reconnected and, and tried to make as much as we can. Do, yeah. do you keep it pretty professional then on set, or are you kind of more laid back and just we oh, try to. Uh, it's hard to keep it professional when it's just us. Yeah. We know we know each it's like working with brothers, you know. Right. It's kind of right. silly to talk to each other with with a you know a professional kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like talking to your wife or your your yeah. your like really yeah. professional it's it's weird, you know? Yeah. But what we do is when we have actors on set then we're professional 100%. Okay. And it's kind of a training it's like a tr- training regime for us uh, to do that uh, so we know how to act in the future when 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 hopefully we're much bigger team right it's good ideology i think yeah that's good yeah. because then they can kind yeah, of yeah. go around to other productions honestly i think actors are the best like word of mouth for you as a filmmaker you 100%. Know, because they go work 100%. on a hundred productions that that year you know and, and they're all spreading your name and telling telling yeah. people how it was working with you and and uh they're they're like the almost the best marketing tool for jobs right in a sense. that's why we try to keep it professional when they're there yeah you know every every film we make uh we have such we have such high standards for us and we want to deliver on every film we make yeah and so we we tend to test shoot every film we do uh, we we usually test shoot the whole thing for uh, once or twice before we go on the actual shoot okay and i've figured that kind of saves us money and time and uh, so we know exactly what to do when when actors arrive you know so you do like the scoring uh, the editing, you do the editing for your films as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So, do you do the cinematography too, or do you have somebody dedicated for that? The cinematography is, you know, I do storyboard mm-hmm. for every movie that I make, mm-hmm. and we kind of figure we we draw uh, it, we do it, you know, uh, traditionally, mm-hmm. and then we, as I mentioned before, we do the test shoots, and that's when we kind of figure out the angles that we want to use. So we kind of come up with the shots together, and that's not the typical way of making movies. No, but yeah. uh, we have this philosophy that best idea wins, no matter who comes up with it. Okay. And uh, trying to learn them everything that I know personally, mm-hmm. uh, especially about cinematography, because that's the only thing that I don't want to do. Because I want to be hmm. able just to focus on the acting and you know the completed shot. I just want to look in the monitor and just see if it's working or not i don't want to i i think the quality of the movies because uh, before i used to shoot the movies myself and direct them mm-hmm. uh, and you know you kind of lose focus uh, if you have to operate a camera whilst directing them. some low budget productions people want to isolate and do one job you know that they they are interested in. Um, so right. some some shoots I've been on, you know, you're you're focused on that one job and that's all you're doing. But I do like the approach better of everybody collaborating together 
I think especially for like short films and stuff, I think that's a good I, good approach to have is you guys are flexible. That That's a really nice way to make movies, but that's just not in the real world. Right. That's just not realistic, right. you know? Yeah. So we try to take advantage of that whilst we can. Right. Because I know th that's just not going to work in the real world. You cannot just swap roles. Right. Just It's just not professional, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you were hired the only for thing that, that we specific job. Right, you know? right, yeah. right. It's it's a fun way to work, you know, and especially if you know each other. And and uh, I trust every single one of those guys on my uh, crew. I know that they are capable uh, of delivering, whether it's operating the camera or recording sound. Or do you guys work out of a studio, or do you all just kind of congregate uh, from home, kind of deal? We have this studio in my apartment okay. uh, and we kind of hold every meeting that we have in my apartment since I have the biggest apartment of them all. Yeah. Uh, and um, so we just gather here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we gather here, we sit in the living room, we have a whiteboard. It's guerrilla filmmaking yeah. in, 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 in a sense, uh, but it's so much fun. Uh, I edit the movies because I have a big, big interest in editing. Mm -hmm. It's just my favorite part of filmmaking, especially you know the whole post production is my favorite part. Yeah, and I think a lot of a lot of filmmakers feel the same. Oh yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, that's really where your film starts to you know breathe. Yeah, and uh, come together. You can do yeah, yeah. So I usually edit the movies and uh, score the mo the movie. And then we have one guy in our crew. He works with visual effects. That's his real kind of job. Yeah. Uh, you know, Monday to Friday job. Yeah. Uh, and so he does the visual effects for our movies. And we do it together here in the studio. And he also grades our movies. He's a big kind of great expert. So he knows that stuff. He, he kind of calculates everything. Stuff that I don't understand. That's just yeah. definitely not my line of work, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, I know right. when it looks good, you know, yeah. I can direct him and I see, okay, this looks good, but try it do like this. But yeah. he's he's the mathematician here, definitely when it comes to grading and and uh, visual effects for you. Yeah, every, there's some there's some uh, cool thing. shots or there's some cool stuff that he did that I think he did. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, we'll find out when we watch it. We'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll find out. And uh, so just a real quick question as well. I, I'm just curious. So when you score your films as well as edit them, do you finalize the edit before you score? It's different on every project. Okay. I'm very used to edit, to edit to music since I've done so many music videos. Right, yeah. I like to edit to music. I think yeah. uh, I just I just like the process of it. Um, so what I usually do with these shorts is that I have two stations here. Mm -hmm. So I and and my my chair. So I edit for a while and then I get in the mood of making some music to that scene that I edited. Okay. So I just turn my chair over and start <laughs> to compose, you know. Yeah. Can you uh, use the laptop to show your setup real quick? The piano? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here is my setup and oh, nice i have two shot. screens i like that yeah man <laughs> yeah man i like it can you see it? where is it let me see yeah right there, there it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> so here is my keyboard you know good uh, kind of uh, instruments here uh, which i use mm -hmm. and um, then here i've just i don't know if you can see but here is i've cleared this uh, space here uh, yeah. for this interview okay but uh, just behind uh, in front of me is where i uh, edit and then i have my movie collection there <laughs> oh nice nice yeah i can't wait so, can't wait to have my own like studio room yeah? yeah 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 i mean it's 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 really nice it's it's my man cave it's uh, where i go to you know find solitude yeah i usually come up with uh, with the melody of each film that i write okay. uh, in beforehand cuz uh, i go to the piano and just play something and just compose something and yeah. until i find something that kind of clicks something that go in line with uh, with the story yeah i've always loved uh, film music mm -hmm. uh, it's 99% of what i listen to I used and, to be the same uh, way because, you know, I would listen to uh, film soundtracks on Zimmer, obviously. And then, yeah. 
yeah, 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 uh, yeah. listen to uh last samurai soundtrack and yeah stuff yep. like that i'd have the whole whole cd there's something about the music that helps get images into my brain you know for absolutely. planning stuff out absolutely so, absolutely so when you're storyboarding and stuff like i like to put on music and i like to storyboard mm -hmm. with the music interesting that you mentioned that because you know one thing that i find soundtracks do that songs don't is that there is no lyrics in soundtracks there right. is nobody interrupting your thoughts with with text you know right yeah. it's just pure music and music that allows you to listen to your brain yeah and your thoughts and um, that's something that i've always loved and uh, felt a deep connection to you know especially movie soundtracks mm -hmm. uh, but i couldn't play any instruments mm. and uh, i didn't know that i I, I kind of sensed that I had something of that in me because I used to walk in daydream uh, uh, melodies in my head, you yeah, know, and yeah. f film melodies. They just kind of come to me, you know. Mm. So uh, I think it was in 2015, so seven years ago, I decided, let me just go and buy a keyboard. Let me just plug it into the computer. Let me download and buy a... Uh, a software for that mm -hmm. and let me just start to learn to play the piano and see what i can do so i start to play every day um a lot of hours uh we'll we'll uh we can transition into the film uh watching the film right. together yeah um, yeah yeah and i'm just i'm super interested in learning about how you made this film it's yeah, let's watch it together. I haven't seen this for quite a while, uh, and I'll try to remember as much as I can. Before we play it, I just want to say that I watched your short uh, that you released today. Oh, yeah. I uh, <laughs> loved it, man. Yeah. It was great shoot. Great, uh, you captured the golden hour perfectly. It was yeah. beautiful lighting throughout throughout the film. Thanks to Cody, he, uh, he caught that on camera. Um, yeah loved well, it. you know actually you know what's funny is uh this film was the inspiration for that believe it or not which film the, this film we're about to watch thaw really um not wow. not as far as like the story elements and stuff because it's no. a totally different yeah. film i don't know there, there's just like a little subtle humor to it you know that's awfully kind of you i n never knew that i would inspire somebody else uh, yeah you have like this dark humor to it and i really liked that yeah i, I dug that a lot. yeah 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 that was the whole, it, it has this fetishious quality to it. I think it took us about uh, a month to make this film. So we spend a lot of time in, in, in pre-production for that kind of stuff. Hmm. And, uh, and then I think we shot the film. We did three test shoots for this film. Mm -hmm. And then we shot the actual movie for a day. I think we shot the whole thing for about eight hours. Yeah. And I edited it and made the soundtrack for it and all the post-production. I think it took us about a week. And then the rest is history. What is Thaw about? Can you give me like a brief synopsis of Thaw? I'm trying to remember what the movie is <laughs> yeah, about. Because right. <laughs> I haven't thought about this movie for, while, for a yeah, year. And, yeah. I, and you know, I have this tendency that once I release the movie, I never look back at them. Oh. Oh, you're like a Christian uh, Bale kind of guy, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, we were uh, having a meeting mm -hmm. and uh, we were just kind of spitballing ideas. And one of the guys left his notebook on my couch. And I, I when he went home, I started to look at the notebook and I just mm -hmm. saw a man comes home from work and he puts his food in the microwave, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And I don't know why, but that interested me so much. That's awesome. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. and that, that is basically the genesis of this whole wow. uh, 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 project. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's amazing. So we, yeah, yeah. So I took that and I just thought about it. Basically, it's about a guy um, who comes home from work and uh, wants to heat up his frozen food and just mm. eat. And he's had a rough day at work, and he comes home and. In Sweden, a lot of people eat frozen food. And the one thing about this type of food, it actually feels like it takes forever for it to kind of get warm. And we start to toy with that idea uh, and uh, came up uh, with the thought. So basically, he mm. has to wait a whole lifetime for it to, to get ready. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, Spoilers. 
Yeah. Spoiler, spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. So it all originated from just happy, like, yeah, yeah, pants. yeah. But you yeah. know, we've stitched some underlying themes throughout oh, the yeah. movie. Yeah, we yeah. have yeah. we have themes of technology, what it can do to you. Uh, that's that's a, a main theme of the movie. Hmm. Uh, there's a theme of loneliness uh, in the movie. So, just a real quick question out of the gate. Yeah. This actor, is this tattoo yeah. his tattoo? Or did you put that <laughs> on? You might have think it's not his actual tattoo, but it is. It okay. Is. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, this actor, I've known him for quite a while. He starred in one of my longer short films back in, I think, 2010. Okay. Um, and we haven't worked with each other since and since that time he lost his hair and uh, oh. he, he's got him bald and i thought he 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 looked he looked uh, interesting for this role yeah, uh, yeah kind of like you know he, assassin he, you know like uh yeah and and the truth is he's the nicest nicest guy in the world <laughs> in in actuality yeah so it was it, we had to make him look so gruesome and so so scary looking and right. i think we we achieved that and he's a he's a great actor yeah and he had that tattoo and we were thinking of of uh, of covering it up really at one, okay at one stage of uh during pre-production yeah we found not with makeup but right. if he had you know um a, a sweater on or something uh but um oh like a it looks cool it looks interesting you know yeah yeah, yeah. it looks interesting and it kind of yeah. looks um yeah so we 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 kept it yeah, because when you when you open the shot, I mean, it's pretty dead center. You know, it, it's <laughs> it's very noticeable. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it stands out. It makes them unique. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's what we kind of strive for in every movie we we do. We want to have something that feels quite unique, and this tattoo surely made our job a lot easier. Yeah. So, question about this scene. Yep. Uh, so when that's it, one aggressive man. That is a very <laughs> aggressive man. Yeah. yeah. So, did you have? Um, was this like a digital push in, or did you have a slider on the table to kind of like match the impact <clears throat> of the fork? Because I know it's, it like shakes a little bit. You know, it shakes a bit. Yep. Um, yep, is yep. the slider on the table with him or did you digitally? It is that? on the table. So okay. this is a, a, a real life push. Okay. Um, but, and we noticed that the camera was shaking a bit yeah. every time he kind of, he, he used the fork. Yeah. And, uh, I liked it. Yeah. It looks that's, cool. It, it, that's it, yeah. It, it's simple as that. I just like the way it kind yeah. of shaked every time he, he he did that right. so uh, we 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 decided to keep the 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 glider or the dolly on the table and did you have was it like a mechanical slider that you were pushing manually or was it like a one of those ones that's like phone controlled where it's no it wasn't controlled. we're not, we're not nowhere near that fancy so oh, everything okay. is mechanical nice uh, we did it ourselves i think if i if I remember correctly, I did some slight uh, digital manipulation to this shot. Okay. Uh, when when every time he kind of you know cuts the the food, I think there is some slight of extra push in. Okay. Yeah, I just love I love this right here. Like, you know, because you think he just yeah. murdered somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see that he's just poking holes. In, he's making air holes for the uh, <laughs> dish, you know. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that funny. that's uh, <laughs> our way of you know how can we build tension? Yeah, to scene, you know, uh, we wanted to build tension and we wanted to look gruesome and extremely violent and just crazy. Yeah, and uh, and f- just to build that tension that this film needed, and then just end it with a comical relief. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. And then, uh, how did you nail this fork landing here? How did you? Did how many? I think. It, I think. <laughs> I, I think that was dumb luck. To be honest, I, th- okay. I think it was. You know, the first. I think, if I yeah. remember correctly, we did a, we did a couple of takes. Okay. Uh, the first couple of takes, he didn't throw the knife. Okay. Because it looks silly, you know. It, it well, looks it looks silly perfectly when perfectly aligned. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it's perfectly Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. You might have think that we thought that through, <laughs> but in all honesty, in all honestly, I think we we started out not throwing the 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 fork. Okay. Uh, but we needed. I remember that this was kind of improvised on set. This was okay. added on the day. Yeah. We needed some kind of comical relief, and it wasn't funny enough just seeing the food. Right. So uh, we came up with the idea that he would throw the fork and yeah. see how that goes and he yeah. did it uh, and it looked funny we all laughed on set so we decided <laughs> to go for that idea yeah it's just so abrupt you know it's just yeah 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 it's just, and it lands perfectly <laughs> so 10 out yeah. of 10 for the uh olympic Thank you. dive Thank you know <laughs> that's a good landing yeah, yeah. So this right here is this all digital? Yeah, uh, aging. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, the aging. We contemplated a lot uh, of how we would approach this uh, this uh, scene because uh, we wanted to show. We wanted basically uh, three shots. We wanted uh, his real age was which was about thirty, mm-hmm. and we wanted to age him and. Um, so about like right 60. here 60 yeah 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 so double his age and then to 90 so we we kind of uh we we saw different types of alternatives that we could do this uh one in, initially we were supposed to actually uh, use makeup and hire a makeup artist uh to do that for us really okay uh, yeah that was the that was brave initial, That's a brave idea yeah that yeah. that was the one that was the idea we had from the start and yeah. that we held on to that until the last minutes actually hmm. um we just thought we just felt it would be too inconvenient to shoot uh this movie that way because he had to be in the right in the makeup chair for a lot of time right. and uh like so an hour we, or so probably yeah 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 so uh we thought can we do this digitally and yeah. make it look good so we did a couple of shots uh test shots uh that's where the test shooting comes in and we uh, digitally scanned his uh, his whole head and face wow uh, in the computer and then uh, our uh, vfx artist uh, did this amazing work yeah uh, shout out to him really good yeah, he did man. really good and you know it, yeah. he combined the lighting with the wrinkles which is really yeah good. yeah yeah i mean this is hard work this yeah. is something that i would never be able to pull <laughs> right. off yeah, uh, yeah so he did an amazing job uh, especially incorporating the cgi with with the lighting yeah i think that's quite difficult to do it uh, seems but like he it, nailed yeah. it. He yeah. he was the one who originally pitched the idea to do this uh, digitally. So did you and have I, like a sample before you shot this, and so you knew it was going to work out, or did you just kind of shoot this blindly? Yeah, I, and then... no, I I refused to do this blindly. Okay. So when he told me to do this digitally, yeah, uh, I I told him to prove it, see yeah. if it looks good. And he went out and he proved it. So we 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 stuck with that, and uh, it was the best decision we made for this movie. Right? Yeah, and and the lighting did. So how was your lighting setup? Do you remember, um, like how the lighting yeah. setup was? So obviously I mean, you have something kind of, you know, pointing from this direction. Yep. Straight on. I think we have it from that direction. I think we have 
a light uh, maybe on, on the, the other direction also yeah here. there and then yeah. we had something um and in, in front of him also okay um, okay so uh, you know the same maybe. guy who yeah, yeah yeah you know the same guy who does our visual effects he's responsible for the lighting of our movies okay so i tell him how i want it to look yeah and we wanted this aesthetics to this uh, particular film we wanted it to look like um there's a painter called uh, rembrandt from the yeah. 1600s yeah you know you yeah I've you're heard familiar of that. with yeah. that yeah 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 he, and he and made I, the rembrandt I, lighting basically yeah yeah and he and i just love his paintings man they look so cinematic they look so warm they look so contrasty and beautiful so we uh drew inspiration from rembrandt really yeah uh, and and the whole look of the movie is very kind of uh, sepia warm uh, looking uh movie okay yeah. so he's responsible for the lighting and he does an excellent job with the lighting in this in this film and uh, all yeah. our films really yeah uh, so yeah he's so he, he's basically the cinematographer here uh, okay okay yeah and that's probably why the uh, digital aging looks so good too because yeah yeah kind of had an idea of how to light the scene and yeah. then add yeah. that digital aging you know to the absolutely the cheek and everything So this clock, uh, this clock that you have featured in this, is this in your house or is this just a prop that you got? You know, this was a last minute um, add to the movie. Really? Okay. We initially didn't storyboard anything with a clock uh, in it. Mm -hmm. And I kind of find it to be a bit student student to filmmaker to have <laughs> you know the passing of the time with it with the clock yeah, uh, yeah but we needed to find something to build the tension we needed right. to stretch out the moments in between uh yeah. the shots of him aging and the only thing that we had uh, initially was just the microwave right yeah and we needed something else so the only thing i could come up with was uh, a nice looking clock um I think it adds to it. Um, yeah, so yeah. Is that uh, like uh, stock footage clock, or is that no, no, no. clock that you shot? It's uh, we we shot this. Okay. So uh, we didn't shoot it. I don't think we shot this on the day we shot the movie. Okay. Uh, I think this was something. Uh, this was a pickup shoot. Okay. Uh, I think we we edited the movie without the clock, and I felt that something was missing, and I felt that he aged too quickly. Okay. We needed to kind of spread the the uh, the time in between the shots of him aging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went out. Uh, I I looked at marketplace everywhere. I went to different types of flea markets until I found the perfect looking yeah. clock. Yeah. And then we found this one, uh, yeah. which I loved. It yeah. looked really nice. And it has the uh, uh, the ticking uh, time yeah, yeah, on yeah. the bottom and everything. Yeah, because first we were looking for a cuckoo kind of watch, you know, with a with a with a with a bird coming out. Yeah. But I I felt that that was too cheesy, so uh, we we opted for this option instead. Um, yeah. And uh, we we found. Uh, one that matched the kind of palette of the movie. Yeah. And uh, it, aesthetically, it looks beautiful. Yeah. And my my favorite shots of the movie is the is are these uh, shots actually. <laughs> this is where he's getting getting way older now. So you said he's here. He 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 has a foot a yeah. foot in the grave. Yeah, I see like the the gray eyebrows and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so this right here, yeah, this right the here, star of the movie. Yeah. yeah. So how did you do this? Is this digital or mix or is this no. all practical? it's all practical okay uh we were looking for a skeleton for quite some time <laughs> yeah, uh, it yeah. drove me nuts yeah. you know you can buy these things but they don't They're look expensive. so good they well, look like something yeah. that 
that uh, you know people hang outside their house during right. Halloween. It looks fake, you right? Know? Yeah. So we needed something that one looked scary. Uh, we needed something that looked more impressive than something you would find in a in a toy shop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this one was more like a mummy. It's not hundred percent a skeleton yet. Right. Uh, so there are you know fragments of of the of and pieces of you know. Uh, skin hanging here and there on this uh, on this skeleton. Right, and we dressed it up with a T-shirt, one um, one of my old T-shirts. So we we kind of aged that T-shirt and threw it on on the skeleton. Oh, so you made all these holes in it, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for it to because we needed because the guy wears a, a T-shirt and we didn't think of that. We we just we were in, we were supposed to have the skeleton naked just as huh. it was and it didn't make any sense so we needed to find a similar looking t-shirt there's a national swedish television broadcaster called svt uh, in sweden and uh, they have this kind of warehouse with lots of different props they've collected collected during the years mm-hmm. and uh, we just uh, went there and they hire uh, you can you can hire these uh, props um so they help filmmakers out so we found mm-hmm. the perfect one eventually and uh, yeah this is it awesome so did you didn't have to yeah. do really much to this skeleton it was already kind of no no it was already looking really good okay. and um, you know i was really impressed of how it looked because it looks gorgeous it looks yeah. absolutely fantastic yeah and it looks unique and, you know it's not similar yeah, to any other yeah. skeleton um, and prop. the most important thing, he looks like our actor. He does, so, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he does. Yeah. There's, got there's, the, the there's a of the head. similarity. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that was one of the reasons that we chose this actor, actually, because firstly, he had interesting tattoos. Yep. Secondly, he's bald. Yeah. And if we, if we would uh, get an actor who isn't bald, yeah. uh, we needed to have a skeleton with hair. And uh, uh, so, so yeah. we needed to think about all these kind of stuff. So eventually, everything kind of matched together. Well, you know, next time if you want to uh, hire me uh, in Sweden, you know, I got to be <laughs> no hair. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can do the sequel. The, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. That was it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that's good. Thank uh, you. Did you um, make your logo after? We actually did it beforehand. We've had really? this logo for a couple of years. Okay. It just so we just very found very well. Yeah, yeah we, we, we thought of how we were incorporating our logos in our short films. Yeah. And we've noticed that people doesn't have this attention span that I really want people to have. Right. So we yeah. cannot put it up front, up front of the movie. So we decided to put our logo in the end of the movie. Uh-huh. And the, in each film we do, we try to kind of... We try to present the logo in a creative way. What I usually do is I just have some closing comments. I haven't chatted with anyone, you know, besides the one that I, the ones that I know right. about filmmaking and, and yeah. films in general. So it's fun for me. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy talking about it, and you know, I I, I learn something from talking to everybody. Everybody has yeah. kind of different takes on things, and oh, there's the wine glass. I see it. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> this is the wine glass. It's just Coke, everybody. So for people to know, this is just Coke. <laughs> yeah. We're in the middle of a move, and all I could find were, were yeah. wine glasses. Yeah. So it, it had to do. You know, moves are stressful. Uh, yeah. I understand. You know, <laughs> They are. They are. They are. And then are you working on anything else uh, now? I am. We haven't released something lately. Uh, it's been quite a time. Uh, but as you... I do weddings also. It's good yeah. money, you know. Uh, it's good money, you know. So we've been busy with that. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have actually a short film that we've working on. We've been working on since 2019. Uh, we oh. shot it back then, and it never really worked. Hmm. But there is something there. I think it's the most beautiful film we've shot. It has some story issues. I believe. Oh. Uh, so we're trying to save that movie. Yeah. Uh, we have um, 
another short that we want to start shooting in a in, in a month's time. Mm-hmm. Uh, also going to be a horror movie, uh, and that one is quite longer. It's going to be about 10 minutes long. Okay. Uh, we're aiming for Christmas, and hopefully it will be released then. If not, it's going to be around that uh, time. Awesome. Before we close, do you want to give any like shout outs to anybody, or do you want to? announce anything i want to give a shout out to to let me see i want to give a shout out to my crew uh i love you guys and thank you for i'm i'm i feel so lonely without them (laughs) Uh, but i'm talking i'm talking on their behalf yeah yeah um i think they agree mostly with what i've said Mm -hmm. Uh, but i love making movies with these guys and i know if to be realistic i know that it's not always going to be like this but I'm enjoying the time that we have together now yeah. uh, until we all part ways uh, onto bigger things. Well, Yusef, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you stopping by and talking to me. Likewise. And more views for Thaw because Thaw is awesome. Thank you. you. Watch it. Thank you. And uh, thank you. You know, the it was fun watching it again after a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. Get a different perspective. Yeah. You know, just, exactly. Uh, <laughs> now it's it's like it's like I watched it as a as a viewer yeah, just like yeah. an audience member it's yeah. not like it's my movie anymore so it's 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 it was it was fun yeah. thank you for that 